Well, guys, I'm probably about to state the obvious. As we all know, I think two things. Jameis has to be cautious with the football. He has to score points, especially more than what they scored last week versus the Seattle Seahawks. And, you know, this, this is a time where Jameis has to flourish. I think if the New Orleans Saints are going to go further um, than where they're at right now and, you know, I think, um, you know, create that championship mentality, that caliber, championship caliber type of football, this is the time to do it. And Jameis has to be at the forefront. No Michael Thomas. Um, and, you know, not a lot of guys in, in, in the lineup who's stepping up and, and making a lot of plays in terms uh, from a receiver's perspective. But I like the way they used Alvin Kamara last week. I think Jameis got to lean on Alvin Kamara and, and what they do best together. I think they developed some chemistry last week versus the Seattle Seahawks and ran a lot of choice routes that had those guys on defense really out of position. And take advantage of a Bucks defense that's good up front, but is slowly but surely getting better in the secondary, has some guys out. Um, so there will be some opportunities there, but I think they got to jump on top of them early and they got to score at least more than 20 points because the Saints defense has showed that they can play. They've been pretty successful and productive over the last couple of years in terms of run defense and pass defense. So James got to score points and be meticulous with the football. Yeah, they're going to have to unleash Jameis for good or for bad because nobody can run on Tampa. And we know we know Tampa's entire game plan is going to be don't let Alvin Kamara kill us. We don't even know if the Saints are going to have Taysom Hill for this game. He hasn't practiced yet this week dealing with a concussion. And Taysom obviously can add some good you know, uh, trick play elements to the offense. So it's going to be Jameis. Can you get back there and sling it? And Wilds, I think this is a sneaky huge game for Tampa. Everyone knows it's a big game for the huh. Saints. You'd stay alive for the division. You'd be in a position to, be, to make the playoffs, all that. But because Tampa's schedule has been so soft and continues to be even softer, I think they have to, for their own psyche, going into the postseason, beat the type of teams that might be in the postseason. So after this game, they have the Bills, and then their next hardest game is at the Colts. Their next hardest game after that is at the Falcons. Their schedule is the softest in the league, in my opinion, after this week. And so I think there is an element of, yeah, we know we can kick the teeth in of bad opponents. But if you played the Cowboys down to the final second, you lost to the Rams yep. pretty convincingly. If somehow the Saints beat them, I do wonder what it does to a Bucks team that right now has to feel, um, you know, feel great. You just ran up the score on the Bears. So I understand the perspective of the Saints are trying to stay alive for the postseason, stay alive for the division. So approaching it from there, I think from a Super Bowl expectation standpoint, this is a really big game for Tampa. Now I expect them to win because I don't think Jameis is going to be able to carve up the Bucks defense. But I, I want to see how Brady looks against that Saints front. And I want to see how the Bucks look against a, you know, a, a above average opponent. First one they've played in a month. Well, I think it's a win-win for Tom Brady, right? If Tom Brady goes in and cooks up that Saints defense that has been playing really well, obviously we, the Bucs are who we, they thought we were. Or the Bucs are who we thought they were. There you go. But even if yep. Tom Brady loses, I think it's a good stress test for the Bucs. Like, oh, you know what? We're not as good as we thought we were. We're used to, we're, we shouldn't be striving to score five touchdowns, 50 points on teams. There's stuff we need to work on. It's a little bit akin, Mike, to when I like a, I like an NCAA team to lose in the conference journey before they go to the NCAA journey, get them a little bit fired up. <laughs> um, but I want to talk about Jameis. I feel like when Tom Brady went to New, went to New England, that narrative of like playing your old team that like took all the narrative juice of the entire NFL and we all put it into the Tom Brady back in Foxborough bucket. Meanwhile, we've seen some funky performances when guys have been playing their old team. Sam Darnold got benched because he was back in the Meadowlands. And then we saw Goff and Safford, they had an odd game. Maybe Goff's good. They, they, it's, a, it's a strange game. Jameis said he's trying to keep his emotions in check. He's trying to be present. Do you think Jameis playing the Bucks is going to have an emotional impact that will make him play better or worse? 
It could go either way. Wow, she could either play better or he could play worse. Like, it, it's all in what Jameis is feeling when he wake up on Sunday morning. And, and that's going to be <clears throat> the catalyst to success. And hopefully it's on the side of, you know, Aaron, Aaron on the side of playing better because that's what it's going to take. We're going to need to see the 30 touchdown Jameis that we've seen in the years prior. Mm. We know he has the talent to do it, but he got to play this game and keep his emotions in check. I played against Atlanta, I think, twice um, when I was in Philadelphia. And I'll be honest, both times I came into those games, emotions super high and really wanting to beat them. And I'll be candid about that because I can and I should. And and that's a normal thing. Jameis is going to feel that way naturally, so he got to keep them emotions in check play the game and have fun playing it, enjoy playing against your former team. At the same time, trying to show them what they can't say what they're missing, but, you know, what they could have potentially <laughs> had problem. moving forward. So you got to find <laughs> some type of motivation in it. I say all that to say that. <laughs> you can't, you definitely detail. can't show them up, but <laughs> yes. Wilds, you sorry. mentioned it's a win-win for Tampa Bay. <laughs> it's a win-win for me, too. Because my preseason oh, MVP pick, <laughs> Tom Brady. Here we go. And I'm feeling go. really good. I'm a, I don't know how in the world. Didn't I see some odds earlier this week that he's not in the top three? I, I don't, he should be number one as far as I'm concerned. All right, so I'm feeling good about that. And then I got my dark horse candidate, Jameis. You guys make fun of me. You lampoon me. Yeah. All but Jameis, 13 yeah. touchdowns. Three interceptions, all right? So if That's somehow true. he pulls off the upset, then I'm I'm sitting pretty there as well. Win-win for but Broussard. I do think this – yeah, Jameis is interesting because Nick's right. They have no choice but to let him go. And they've had the reins on him all season. He hasn't even thrown for 300 yards in a game. In the first three games, he didn't even throw for 200 in any of those games. I, it seems like lately – They've been letting him go a little bit more. He threw it for 30 times each of the last two games. Those are the only two games all season that he's put it up that much. And they're going to have to let him go this time. We know Tampa Bay, the the secondary is not the best. So if he has a big game, if he's able to have a big game here, then I think this could spur him on. Uh, hopefully the, the great things going okay. forward Stop or it. it could unleash him to make more mistakes <laughs> to make more money i don't mean okay. great things like he's gonna be a pro bowler i, feel you, I just mean he play you know just what i'm saying MVP. like he plays better because yeah, he's you. not look he's mike he's somewhere in between he's the guy that threw for five thousand yards a few years ago and this guy that's on pace to throw for about two thousand all right so where tell me talk to me about <laughs> how this could spur Jameis going forward. Well, like you say, it's a confidence boost there. And right now, Jameis needs all the confidence that he can get. And I think you said something that's very interesting. Uh, not a lot of attempts over in during the game or through, throughout the course of the game, 30 yeah. being the average, that's not a lot of passing. And that, that seems like, uh, you know, what we was doing in, in 2004, 2005 in Atlanta. We was doing more running than passing and a lot of shorter com- route combinations and concepts. You got to push the ball down the field, especially against the Bucks defense, who, like I say, is wounded in some areas, but getting better. So this is the time to lay the foundation and I think, you know, set up for the postseason. You know, it starts this week for the New Orleans Saints and Jameis Winston, to your point, Chris. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.